Thank you all for coming. This is an amazing turnout. Um, we haven't done one of these uh, after COVID at this point, so we're happy to see people in person. We're happy you can all make it. A lot of familiar faces, some people I've met for the first time today, which is really awesome to put a face to a name, so we're really happy all of you came out. Um, I'll give a presentation later, just a quick agenda wrap up. So. Um, I'll introduce Jessica Bonashek, which is the Chief of Economic and Community Development, and then the Mayor will speak, your state legislatures will speak, um, we have members of the Common Council here as well. After that portion, I'll give a quick presentation and then we'll really open up the floor to you guys for questions. So if you guys have anything that's on your mind, write it down, I'll be coming around with a mic. Um, this is really an opportunity for you guys to be able to ask questions of staff, of the Mayor of your state legislature. Um, people you don't usually get a ton of face time with, so we're happy to provide that opportunity for you. Um, so with no further ado, I will introduce Jessica Bonashek. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I know you've heard this too many times, but thank goodness we are in person, right? I mean, how many times have we Zoomed, and, uh, but it's so great to see everybody. And it's days like today when we get to really see the strength of business in Norwalk and the strength of nonprofit in Norwalk. So, um, you know, I just wanted to give you a little bit of history about our department, the Economic Community Development uh, Office, and also kudos to Mayor Rilling for his leadership and support and the Common Council members as well. Uh, in 2018, um, there was no Economic and Community Development Office. There was no Business Development and Tourism Office. We've actually been here for 48 months, a total of four years, and in that time, we've seen the difference that these efforts can make. Four years ago, Mayor Rilling and the Common Council voted to restructure the city, and they created our office. And at that point in time, we have $400,000 in capital funding, and today we have almost $10 million. But the difference of that, in, in addition to the capital, is that we also were committed $8.7 million of ARPA money. And with that $8.7 million, we dedicated more than $4 million to the business in the city of Norwalk. We've spent down 1.3 million already through some of the programs that Sabrina's gonna talk about, but we have 3.1 million left to commit to businesses uh, in the city of Norwalk between now and the end of 2026. So when you think of it, 48 months ago we had $400,000, and today we have more than $25 million worth of funding for businesses by the end of 2026 here in the city. And I, if I don't, if there's anything that is called leadership, that is leadership. 48 months ago, we didn't have any of this. So thank you to the mayor for the support and the leadership. <laughs> so in our positions, it's always a lot of fun because we get to develop a whole bunch of programs and a whole bunch of policies and try to be responsive to the community in a meaningful way. And we've done that over the last number of years by getting businesses together and asking what do you need and how do you need it? And why is that important to you? And how can we help you tell your story and help you give your resource, help you give the resources you need to be successful? And whether that be through planning and zoning or building and code enforcement or actual funding through programs like Sabrina's gonna talk about, there are many different facets in the, in the way in which we think about that. But when it comes to economic community development, we also think about transportation and mobility and parking. And we think about the different aspects of streetscape improvement and storefronts and how we're building strong communities and how we're building strong neighborhoods. And what really drives us and makes us passionate about our work is the people. It's not so much the buildings. It's not so much the intersection. It's how people move through the intersections to get to the businesses to be able to have the interaction that they need. And so without all of you, you know, we wouldn't be able to be successful. And without the leadership of the mayor and the common council, we wouldn't be able to be successful. So, you know, it really is my pleasure to be able to present those numbers to you and let you know that Norwalk is open for business and we're stronger than we've ever been when it comes to economic and community development. Thank you everyone. Enjoy your morning. And I'd like to introduce Mayor Rilling. Thank you, Justin. Welcome, everybody. It's really great to see such a packed house. 
You know, we normally start off at the, we normally end up by saying thank you to people. But I want to start off by thanking the people in the beginning. But I also want to acknowledge some of the people that we have here, our elected officials. We have our council president, Greg Burnett. We have Nora Dijoski Eichter, a council person. David Hewlin, the council person. And you'll be hearing from Senator Duff and uh, State Representative Dominique Johnson. Hope I didn't miss any of our council or elected officials. The other people I'd like to thank because, as Jessica said, you know, this cannot be done without a team effort. And she thanked me, but really, the team that works for me, the team that we've assembled, makes all this happen. They put this together. They put the programs together, and we just work together to make sure that our, our business community, our nonprofits, are supported in any way that we possibly can. So I have a list so I don't miss anybody. Uh, we have Jessica Bonashek, you just heard from our Chief of Economic and Community Development, Sabrina Gadeski, our Director of Business Development and Tourism, Steve Kleppen, our Planning and Zoning Director, Jim Travers, our Director of Transportation, Mobility and Parking, he's back there, and Pedro Mata, our Capital Asset Manager, who you will find at our Business Development Center. Now the Business Development Center was just recently uh, opened so that it can be a resource for people in the city of Norwalk, the business owners, nonprofits, whether you want to start a business, you want to expand your business, or you may be having some problems and looking for certain resources. And as you heard from Jessica, the money and the funds that we've allocated to help our local business community, I think is a deep, shows a deep commitment to making sure that Norwalk is economically sound, that we can help you in any way we can. So we're here today to tell you what the resources are that are available. We're here today to uh, answer your questions and hear your concerns. What things are you experiencing that uh, you may need us to work on, work with you, so we can help you in any way that we possibly can. So again, I wanna thank you for being here, and it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Senator Bob Duff for some comments. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Good to see you all, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to uh, say a few words, appreciate it. Um, and also, I see folks uh, from the Chamber of Commerce as well, and many other leaders in our community, and it's uh, great to see everyone here uh, this morning. Uh, I, I would like to echo, first of all, Mayor Rilling's comments on the fact that uh, he has put together really a truly outstanding team at City Hall, and thanks to him and the folks on the uh, members of the Norwalk Common Council, uh, that's all really very, very important because it helps me and it helps Representative Johnson do our jobs better knowing that uh, he has assembled a team that we can rely on, that we can work with, and that gets the job done. And that's all, all those things are very important. And that helps in the fact that uh, Norwalk, um, actually a lot of people are very jealous of Norwalk right now, uh, around the state, and I say that in a very positive and good way, um, because Norwalk is considered uh, one of the two fastest growing cities in the entire state of Connecticut. And I, I view that as a positive. Uh, for our for our city, and I view that as a positive for our state. Um, Connecticut right now is in a very strong position. Um, we are in a very solid and strong position here in our state, and I'll tell you why. Uh, one is that uh, we are, as many of you know, we're experiencing a, a very strong uh, budget surpluses right now after many years of uh, deficits and rebuilding and. and building the foundation and putting ourselves in this position after many very difficult decisions, economically, we are uh, very strong. Uh, we have surpluses, we have a full rainy day fund, uh, we just passed a bill to uh, continue with the fiscal guardrails uh, that we have that has put us in this position with our volatility cap, with our bond cap, and ensuring that our revenue cap, uh, we have locked in where it is right now. So some of that stuff may be gobbledygook to you, um, but that has been very important to our states in the way that we've been able to pay down our pensions, the way that we've been able to increase our ratings at Wall Street, uh, and the fact that we've been able to uh, pass $600 million of tax cuts last year, and on top of that, still being able to bring $300 million of funding to the city of Norwalk over the last two years. And that's important because a lot of that money, besides going to the, the city operating funds and going to the Board of Ed uh, for school construction and their operating funds, a lot of the money uh, went towards uh, infrastructure improvements. And thanks to the great staff here at City Hall who've been able to identify great projects and working with Mayor Rilling and others, uh, we've been able to deliver those funds uh, to the city of Norwalk. Uh, Norwalk is, is really poised to jump off to 
even higher greatness and more greatness over the next five to 10 years, I think, uh, because of the great staff and because of the funding and because of uh, the vision that's out there to make sure that NARA continues to grow in a responsible way. It grows so that uh, we're protecting some of our outlying neighborhoods, but we're also investing and reinvesting <clears throat> in our city, in our urban areas, in our urban core, and that we're also working with in, uh, working to uh, with infill as well for the highest and best use uh, for our, and bringing in additional tax dollars. Uh, so I think working together from the state and the city perspective is extremely important. So I'm, I was very happy to be asked to just say a few words um, as well. And so for me anyway, uh, I look forward to, to continuing what we're doing. There's, there's so many great things that can continue, whether it's on Wall Street, whether it's in Sono, uh, whether it's in East Norwalk and other places. Um, Norwalk has no limits right now. Uh, the sky is the limit for us. Uh, we'll continue to make great investments. We'll continue to attract great people. Um, and we'll continue to make sure that uh, we're working hard uh, to make Norwalk the best city that it possibly can be. Thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce one of our newest state representatives, who is a former council person, who is just knocking it out of the park right now, uh, who is my neighbor down the street, uh, who's going to ensure that our roads are plowed quickly when it snows. Is <laughs> uh, Dominique Johnson, state representative, doing a great job. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate you. It's so great to, to see um, neighbors live on our street, not only, but also friends uh, and just amazing advocates of this community, especially for the nonprofits. I see you, small businesses, entrepreneurs. I had great opportunity to learn from you all about what we can do to help bring um, innovation to here in Norwalk, working with our city partners. Um, my time on the council with Greg and others has been really instructive for me because it's allowed me to go up to Harper in this first month and try to leverage some connections to make sure that um, your voice is heard. And so I think it's really important to remind myself, since this is my first month and a half, feels like a year, um, <laughs> in a good way, but um, that, you know, we have a lot of bills coming up, and I think Senator Duff and I can talk about this, but they will impact your work and your work life. And so it's very important, I know, to us to have your voice um, in our minds as we make these decisions. So one way to do that is you can contact us and we can talk to you know, folks who are in those rooms making the decisions. I have some small business owners that reached out to testify. We have a really great arts, culture, and tourism movement going on at the Capitol. I've been lucky to sit in on some of those caucus meetings. And I know for you all trying to make our main streets, I was just on a call yesterday about how we you know, amplify what you're doing on Main Street to make it something that we can continue to bring folks to Norwalk um, as a destination, um, which I know helps us all and showcases what we love about our city. So that's the kind of thing we can help you with. I think there's testimony going on tomorrow. If you're ever interested in, in sharing your views, we would love to hear them, and that's what we're here for, fundamentally. Um, so one of the things I love about this work, um, and this, I'll, I'll be very brief about this story, but you indulge me for a sec, because it involves some of my favorite things. It involves workforce development and women's college basketball. And I'll explain it, because <laughs> I was at the legislator night last night at the Excel Center watching the women's game. Unfortunately, I did not win. But um, I had the privilege of sitting next to the provost of UConn, and we had a great conversation in between um, watching the game. And they you know, had this amazing resource available to us up at stores. So I want to share with you all what I learned, which is that um, an advanced manufacturing setup up there is available to us, to you all as business owners, for free by UConn. Um, so if you're looking for a way to train your folks on, say, 3D printing, some of these advanced manufacturing, um, and even have an opportunity to use it if it's not something in your capital budget, there are some great state resources available to you that we would love to connect you with. So that's another part of what we're doing. So please don't hesitate to reach out um, about this and some other things. I, I, I think I'm passing this off to Greg, is that right? All right, so my, my friend and colleague Greg Burnett, president of the council, is coming up. Um, it's just a privilege to be with you all, and when I think of Norwalk, I think about how we're keeping what makes us great, we're innovating by iterating, and we're seeing how you're bringing that innovation. So however we can help you, please let me know. Thanks. It's great to be with you. Good morning. On behalf of the Norwalk Common Council, greetings, and we're elated to see so many people here today to support Norwalk and we're here to support you. Um, 
Our mission, our goal for the Common Council is not to provide good governance, but to provide great governance. We want to get out of the way and allow you the avenue to have a successful business. Our focus is to provide a balanced budget each and every year, which does not tax Norwalk citizens, residents out of Norwalk. And at the same time, provide all of the services that are needed for them to live comfortably here in Norwalk, enjoy Norwalk, and most importantly, spend money and have money to spend in your businesses. So that's what we're all about. That's what we're focused on. That's our goal. So um, we're positioned to do that. And we enjoy doing it. We have two council members that were mentioned earlier, Laura and Dave, uh, that are actively involved in that process. We're closing in on our budget process as we speak. Uh, so good things ahead for Norwalk. We're building the infrastructure in terms of our schools. Uh, what, one, two, three new schools on the horizon. So nothing but positive to say about Norwalk. And we're trying to get that message out. And I think having this room packed is a testimony to the good work that we're doing. And we welcome your input. And, and just to mention, this coming Saturday, to further enhance our relationship with our state delegation, we're holding, I believe, one of the first retreats between the Common Council and the state delegation. So we're all on the same page in terms of moving forward for the whole. So we're trying to work collaboratively and ensure that all of the boxes are checked, double checked, triple checked, to make sure we're providing the best possible environment for our residents. So welcome again. Hope you have a great meeting and we're here to address any questions that you might have throughout the morning. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, again. I'm going to say it probably 18 times today, but that's uh, just how I am. Um, so how do you get this money that, that Jess and the mayor and the state delegation have mentioned that is available to you? So I'm going to talk about it really quickly. Um, we have a new website called norwalkforbusiness.org. It has all of this information on there. Um, but you all received folders today that have our pamphlets, my card in there, so if you have any questions or if you want to apply and be more specific about your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we're always available to you. Um, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to go over kind of what we've done in the past, what we're currently doing, and what kind of the future brings for us right now. So this is kind of the breadth of the programs that we have available, which all really fall under this Small Business and Main Streets program that we have in the city of Norwalk. This program was kicked off um, in October of 2019, and obviously we know what happened very shortly after October of 2019. Um, we didn't have a lot of funding at the moment in time when COVID hit, but obviously, as you all know as business owners, we needed significant capital to make sure you guys could make it and, and weather the storm, really. Um, so through the Common Council and the Mayor's Office, we were able to get a special appropriation, which launched the Storefront Improvement Program, as well as the first round of COVID grants. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how much we spend at this point, um, when rest of the rest of that money will get out the door, and what we're thinking about in the future. We have a few new programs that we'll mention as well. The Kiva program, which some of you are familiar with, some of you are not. Um, the Norwalk Innovation Initiative that we'll be launching hopefully this spring. Um, and Visit Norwalk, which I hope all of you are familiar with at this point, but is a tremendous resource for all of the businesses in Norwalk. Oh, it's, it's going by itself. Um, so this is some of the things we did in the community now. We had, you know, the Christmas lights, the holiday installations that I'm sure you've seen throughout neighborhoods. We have new trash cans. We did the barriers when COVID was um, presented to us. We kind of responded to that challenge in a unique way, as many other municipalities did. Um, and then you'll see kind of random storefronts here, which we'll, we'll get into um, for the storefront improvement program that we have available. Um, so previously when this program launched during, right before COVID, um, it was a 50-50 match. So you pay $100, we'll pay $100. We've since changed that to an 80-20 match. Um, so, you know, that's way less money out of your pocket. And this is grant money. So this is not a loan. This is free money. Um, and it's up to 80% um, of $20,000, which is, you know, $17,000, which is available for you all to participate in. 
we ask that you follow the city procurement process. There's an application available online at our Norwalk for Business website. Pedro or myself will be able to help you with that application if you so need. Um, but we give you the opportunity to work with contractors that you're comfortable with. Um, so if you are a landlord, you could apply. Um, but if you're a business owner directly, you can also apply. So this can be a benefit directly to you or something that you can work with your landlord with. Um, and these are just a few examples of kind of the transformations that we've seen thus far. Um, at this point in time, we have over 15 properties that have applied and accepted funds from us. Um, so we're really excited to keep this program expanding in the future. So you'll just see some side-by-sides um, of kind of what we've transformed on the street level. As many of you are aware, as you've probably seen all of my emails over the past couple of weeks, we have the COVID-19 Business Assistance Grants. Again, we launched this in 2020 with a special appropriation, um, but we've been funding this through the Small Business and Main Street's capital account since then, and now since we have the ARPA dollars available, we have been funding this even more heavily. So we have another $375,000 that's gonna go out the door by March, and this will be the last phase of this program. Um, so we have three, pro three phases of this program up until this point, um, and a lot of feedback that we've gotten to this point is that this program has really, you know, even though the money is, doesn't seem like a lot of money, it's really transformational for some folks and keep their doors open and keep their employees hired, which is really great. So we've already invested over $885,000 to this point. Um, we have spent a total of $430,000 and assisted 69 businesses, and we have another 50 that we're gonna probably fund in this March phase, and we'll have additional as well because um, the way the program is set up, there's if you've already received money from us and you have more employees, we can give you some additional funds, so there'll be a little bit of a difference. Between that, we'll be able to actually spread the wealth a little bit more to more of our businesses. Um, and you can see there's a ton of different businesses that are being helped, so it's not just restaurants, it's not just, um, it's not just kind of main street businesses. Some of the kind of at-home businesses got funded, um, some tutoring, some business um, services got funded as well, so we're really proud that it kind of hit the breadth of our businesses. It wasn't just a specific street or a specific location. So next, we just recently launched in November the Kiva program. So Pedro, can you raise your hand really quickly? <laughs> so Pedro is, our, Pedro is our capital access manager that we brought on board this year. Um, he knows the ins and outs of Kiva. So this is actually not a grant program. It is a loan program. It is a 0% interest, zero fee loan program that you can get up to $15,000. Um, we do not do underwriting for this process. Kiva does that. Um, and I'm sure you all are familiar at this point with the GoFundMe site. So this is similar. People from all over the world will donate to your loan and become a lender to you. Um, so it's really great for those kind of businesses that really have a good story to tell. Um, and then when the funds are finally raised, the loan gets loaned to your business and you pay it back. And the really great part of this is it's really for people and businesses who are just getting started, who can't really get a traditional loan from a bank. Um, and it helps build your business credit, which obviously, as many of the bankers in the room know, is a really important factor of getting kind of larger influxes of cash from a traditional lender. Um, so we're really excited about the program. This is not a one and done. You can apply to the program, you can get your loan, you can pay back your loan and apply again. Um, so it's really meant to help your growth along the way without taking a lot of capital from a traditional lending institution. And again, Pedro's your guy. He's at the Business Development Center every day, um, and he can walk you through the process, the application, all that fun stuff. So this is kind of who we've helped so far. We have some additional folks to add to this slide. Um, but we've ha helped a lot of women, which is really amazing. Just by chance, this happened to, to occur. Um, women and minority-owned businesses is a big focus for us, but this program specifically is really assisting those business owners, so we're really proud of that, and we're happy to see that trend moving forward. Um, and it's really taking people to a different level in their business careers and their entrepreneurship journey. Um, so we're happy to be a part of it as a partner, and we're happy to offer this program. So lastly is this newer program that we will be launching in spring. So we did do a pilot of this program in partnership with the Chamber. Um, last year where we received a couple applicants for $5,000 grants through their Small Business Development Academy, but we're kind of flipping the switch on this program a little bit. So as I'm sure as business owners, you know what's available to you or have some sort of inkling of what's available to you. So you have institutions like SCORE, you have institutions like the, back, the Black Business Alliance, you have 
the Norwalk Business Development Center, you have the chamber, you have a breadth of resources available for you from an educational standpoint. Um, so as long as you've touched point with any of these institutions at one point of your entrepreneurship kind of journey, um, you would be eligible to participate in Norwalk Innovation Week, which we're coming, will be coming to you in April 2023. Um, if any of you have seen the show Shark Tank, it is exactly that. <laughs> so you'll have a presentation, you'll have a business plan, and you will essentially pitch pitch to business owners and sharks and you know realtors and things of that nature and um, really tell your story and let us know what you're gonna use that funding for. And then we're gonna be on the back end from the funding side of the house or we can say from five to $15,000, you can get a certain amount of funds to support that goal or vision or that growth that you're looking for. And this isn't just for new entrepreneurs that are just starting out either. This is for people that are looking to expand. This is for people who are trying to innovate. There's not kind of a lockbox kind of perfect mold of what we're trying to fit anybody into, which is why we're making it kind of a, a breadth of a program where you can participate in a bunch of different of our partners programs and then apply to our program. So in our pilot, we've invested $15,000. Um, Lindsay's Handmade Ice Cream is one of them. She's also a Kiva recipient. So she's been through a variety of our programs and that's just an example to show that none of our programs are a one and done. Um, you can apply again, you can apply to multiple of them. You could use funding from the COVID grants to use as a match for your storefront improvement program. Um, any of these things can be layered together. As I'm sure all of you know about already, Visit Norwalk is a free marketing resource for any business in Norwalk. Um, you have a pamphlet in there, but Visit Norwalk has, you can email me directly. We will connect you with our team. They manage all the social media for Visit Norwalk. They'll have events like restaurant weeks, things of that nature. We're doing a fitness focused week when it comes in the spring and the summertime, um, and a lot more family focused weeks as well. So it's really just providing discounts during that time so we can get more generated business for all of you guys. Um, but again, it's free to have your business listing on there. It's free to get marketing on there. It's free to use our social media. Um, so definitely use it as a resource. We have over 3,000 unique website visits a month. We have over a million impressions a month as well. Um, we pay for advertising for you guys on your behalf as well. So we advertise Morocco as a city, but we also advertise specific businesses and what you guys have to offer as well. Um, we have this really cool technology that actually tracks that people are coming into Norwalk. So we have over 115 unique visitors to Norwalk specifically from other surrounding areas, which is really cool. Um, so definitely take advantage of this. Again, totally free, just a resource for you guys. And this is what I mentioned at the beginning, the Norwalk for Business website we just launched. Um, if you have a great story to tell, please reach out to us. We're looking for case studies all the time to put on our website. Um, and we post kind of people's brand openings. We have all of our programs listed there. The process for permitting and licensing is up there. The team is working on digitizing that process in the coming years, so we're really excited to include that on this website. If you're looking for space, it's on there as well. So it kind of covers the breadth of everything that a business owner would need to know. Um, and if you have any questions about any of our programs, you can go there first, but you can also just come to us directly. That's what the Business Development Center is for. And that's the last slide. <laughs> it's about the Business Development Center. So again, we're there every single day, nine to four, Pedro's there. Um, I'm there every single Wednesday. If you want to set up an appointment specifically, we'll usually meet there as well. Um, better to be closer to the youth than farther away. Um, and we provide technical assistance, location assistance, if you're looking to move, if you're looking to expand, if you're confused about the zoning code or don't care to know about it, we're your people to do that for you. Um, we can assist you with any of our programs. We can help you with state assistance programs as well. Um, anything from, you know, you're just starting out, literally to registering your LLC, we can help you. But if you're also kind of in a difficult spot, we can help you there too. So we're really excited to offer that resource and I'm gonna stop talking at you now. <laughs> but if you have any questions, feel free to always reach out to us. I want you guys to see us as a partner and a resource um, and that's kind of why we've developed all these things up until this point. So we're happy to have you here again. Thank you for coming out. Um, and now I'm gonna transfer over to kind of the Q&A portion. So if anybody has specific questions, feel free to get it started. David, here, I'll come around with the mic. Thank you, everybody. Just wondering, um, among the many small business um, assistance programs, do nonprofits have a place at all? Pedro, 
Mayor can keep a, a nonprofit? They can, but their guidelines are a little stricter. The nonprofit has to be operating for at least two years. Um, I have not done a nonprofit with them yet, but we can definitely investigate it. So they do say yes, but it's not. It's it's, it's more restrictive than a traditional small business. So that's the only. The storefront improvement program would be effective as well. So that's not just for for-profit enterprises. So if you have a physical location that's any type of street-facing location, that would apply. Um, we can use it to pay for benches, seating planters, signage, windows, painting, kind of a breadth of street-facing things that happen on the storefront, and that can be a not-for-profit, a for-profit, or any of those different types of things. Anybody else? I have some prompting questions, if anybody's <laughs> interested in me doing that. Go ahead. Is there any update on the no wall car, uh, the Wall Street corridor improvements? Jim, you wanna take the, Take the baton on that one. <laughs> uh, so, sure. Uh, so, uh, for those that, that I didn't see the introduction before, my name is Jim Travers. I'm the Director of Transportation, Mobility, and Parking. Um, so, uh, we're still full force moving ahead uh, with that. So, we have a couple of different phases. So, um, phase one, we are in the, the final design, uh, and that is up at Condot waiting for their final review. That will be for the part of East Wall Street from Brook Street to Main Street. Uh, which will start it off. That will go into construction this year, um, uh, assuming that we get the, the grant back by the thing. But, but our, every, our, all of our, our, our conversations at the gate that uh, will be in, in there this year. Uh, what we have for the, the main part of the corridor, which is Wall Street between Maine and Belden, the reconfiguration of that intersection uh, where we have Belden down to um, Burnell uh, and River Street and, and that section of Maine. Uh, that is at uh, about 30 percent uh, design right now. That's what we introduced. We're fine tuning uh, those. Our intent is that we will be in front of the community again in April uh, for another design threat to kind of go through that that process. And I think at that point in time, we'll have a little bit more answers uh, of where we are there. But additionally, we are coming to about. Uh, we're about 60% in the final design, construction design for uh, the, the facade improvements to the Yankee Doodle Garage. Uh, so that we anticipate will be ready uh, for bid by June. Uh, so we anticipate that that will start uh, construction uh, this year as well. So we think a couple of different aspects. We are, we're, we're moving and shaking for Wall Street. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I'll go on my questions. If you have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Hi, it's Raphael Gomez um, from Pulse X Fitness here in Norwalk. Um, I think my question is um, now that I'm doing digital content, I close my gym to do digital content, and my main focus is to help people, and I want to get into the school system. And I'm able to do one school at a time. That's not if it's not um, it's not digital, but digitally I can do all the schools at the exact same time. So teachers, students. Whichever, you know, the vision, my vision is to do like 10 minute classes for students. Like a 10 minute boot camp every other day, all the schools in Norwalk at the same time. And then work my way up to the teachers and offering them something and trying to get my fitness, getting everybody healthy and focusing on everyone. So I closed down my physical location just to focus on digital to pull that off. And with the goal of doing the schools and also doing the digital content, um, streaming from different locations. So if anyone has a company and they want to, I can stream my classes from them and you guys can get people to come in, well, we can work on something like that too. So I can live stream from Stepping Stones as an example. And people can go in person, work out, and I can also do it online. So my main thing is trying to get into the school system. It hasn't been easy. So that's what I want to work on. I can figure that out. Yeah, so I think that's a great question. So we get that request, honestly, a lot more than you would think. There's a lot of businesses that want to integrate more with, you know, Norwalk's youth, which is really amazing that our business community really wants to give back in other ways and forms. Um, I've, you know, only worked in Norwalk and lived in Norwalk, but I also lived in Los Angeles, and that's not the same story for a lot of business owners in kind of a larger, more disconnected community. Um, so we can definitely get you connected with the Board of Ed. Um, there's a direct contact that we have that we can get you in touch with so we can see if there's a potential partnership there for sure. And that's that's a perfect, thank you for doing that because it's a perfect example of why we're here. So if there's anything like that that you need to contact, we don't want to be your conduit. So if you have any questions that you want to forward to 
Bopped Up, Dominique, Greg, any of that, you can obviously contact them directly, but we are also your conduit to be able to do that as well. So that's great. Anybody else? I'll run over. <laughs> Hi, Ken Moore, question of your real estate partner. My uh, question is, uh, the Watt Bridge Project is going to start this year, later this year. Um, and does the city have an action plan for the economic development and the impact the bridge will have, particularly, of course, on South Normal? Yeah, so we've actually been working really closely with the state's team um, and DOT to be able to make sure that the mitigation measures are in place. There's obviously going to be an impact, um, but we're doing the best we can, not only to have direct contact, so it's not just an email list, it's really reaching out directly to see what people need, what routes are best, um, to kind of close down roads, those types of things. It's obviously a very necessary project, um, so we have to do it, but we have to figure out a way where we can all coexist together. Um, this is also kind of the impetus of why we started to do all this visit for Norwalk, visit Norwalk stuff, and, Norwalk for business so that we can get in touch with a lot more of you so that when things like this happen, um, we have more of a direct contact link to all of you. So we've been working with our team not only for more place making, <laughs> so it's not just looking like a construction zone when it's happening. Um, so we're working with them with that. Our transportation parking mobility team is working with them directly. Jess is always on call, so the state DOT and the state legislature is definitely um, there. That's a major concern for them, but also for us. So we're definitely looking um, to be able to provide programs that may assist you guys during that portion of time, but also to utilize existing resources to make sure that we still are drawing people to the area that might not maybe be deterred because something like that is happening. So we're here just to help you on that front as well. Are there any plans for developing a retail in South Norwalk? We have a lot of empty retail spaces. And I see that there's efforts on occasion, but it doesn't seem very consistent. Um, you know, I'm lucky I have, a, I have a retail store, but I couldn't survive on very little traffic that I get. I was very lucky. I'm working with the Spinnaker group, and they're very helpful. Um, I have a wholesale business that supports everything. But just to bring foot traffic, you know, during the days, uh, the weekends, um, these, these empty retail places really don't give a great vibe for Washington Street. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anything. And that's specifically retail. Not it's speci I mean, retail brings a lot of culture. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of restaurants. There's, there's just, there are plenty of restaurants that we love all yeah. of them. But it's, it's nice to have the mix. I totally get what you're sure. saying. Sure. And the people that come in will say, oh, there's nothing to do. It's yeah. It's open and there's retail space. You know, so there's no places to walk and walk in and out. And oh, of course, of course. So that was kind of why we invented the storefront improvement program, is hopefully to get people in is a little bit quicker. It's, it's, it's with the landlord. But it's, yeah, so we talk often with their landlord. Um, they do show the spaces probably about once a month. Um, the smaller spaces are a lot easier to rent in their eyes. Um, the larger ones have been sitting vacant for a lot longer. Um, there's only so much we can do from our city perspective besides <laughs> kind of talking to them every couple of weeks to kind of get an update and what we can do and what they can do to kind of move the ball forward. Uh, so we talked a lot about pop-ups, which is something that we've seen. <laughs> so you have, you know, the bookstore pop-ups that you've seen along Washington Street. Um, there's gallery pop-ups, those types of things. So that's something that we're really pushing them to do more of. Um, in addition to that, we also talked to them about doing art installations within the vacant storefronts that not necessarily are tenanting people, so that we can actually have a look and feel of a street that people want to go to that's not just vacant spaces. Um, so that's kind of where we're limited, um, but we are doing, you know, as much as we can as a city, we're really trying to make them think creatively to be able to get people into those spaces. Mm. For sure. I hope that helps. Like a regular street fair. Yeah. So that's also something, too. So in the capital budget this year, we have $150,000 to support events, which we've never had before. Um, we're using the ARPA dollars to also take on a special events coordinator, so we'll have somebody on staff that's literally an event planner. So we're going to have more city-run events. We did the holiday events through last through our transportation party mobility department, which I'm sure you all have seen or have seen pictures of in the Wall Street area and in the South Norwalk area on 50 Washington Street. So we're going to do a lot more of events that are smaller scale but have a big impact. 
Um, so we have funding for that now, which we never have had before, and staff and to manage that as well, which is really great. What about shoppable windows in those spaces? That sounds really awesome and great. <laughs> so if you want to talk about that, we're happy to, this is also like a back and forth, so if you guys have ideas that you think we can execute, please let us know, because we're happy to work together with you on that. Let's talk about that. Don't make me cry, Jason. <laughs> I like that the pop-ups, I wonder how that's defined. How long can they be there? What is the process? Can they just do it? There is a process in place. We did release a pop-up permit application, which lasts for about 30 days. Um, we collect all of your information. Steve, you could probably talk to you a little bit more than me about the pop-up permits that we have available. Um, but it's a 30-day permit. They fill out the one sheet. Planning and zoning is aware. The biggest piece of that is really the fire marshal to come inspect for safety. Um, and that's really the breadth of it. So a simple process, not really a fit up, total fit up process, but we do have a process in place. You guys are getting get my steps in. <laughs> um, just a comment again on the, uh, a little bit about the pop-ups since we're, we're in the subject. Um, is, there a process, is there a different process after the pop-up is granted if the pop-up wants to become permanent? Um, just like I know Echo Evolution in South Norwalk became a permanent um, business, which is great. Mm -hmm. We would like to see that happening. Is there a process after becoming a pop-up that needs to take place in order to become permanent? Yes. So after the pop-up permit expires, um, so say your business is doing super well, just the Echo Evolution, he was like, I'm going to make this permanent thing, I'm really sticking with it. So we have our tenant fit process, which would then begin after that. Um, so it starts with zoning permit, and planning and zoning, and then goes to the building department, depending on whatever outfit that you need. Sometimes in a pop-up, you don't really need much outfit. Some place like Eco Evolution, they already had you know, a majority of their staff already there. Um, so not as complicated as a permit if you're doing something that's complete you know, construction renovation. Um, and then when that happens, you'll have your inspections that occur, and then you'll get final sign-off to get in your space permanently. And we can help you walk through that as well, so we have resources for that. Anybody else? What about rent subsidies for the retail spaces? So we have actually spoken about that a few times. The redevelopment agency had offered a program in that breadth, um, probably about in 2017, possibly 2016. Um, what they found is that not a lot of people apply to it. Um, it may be a combination of things, though. It could be because it was not advertised, people didn't meet the criteria, those types of things. So we're obviously looking at those certain programs all the time. Um, we want to have some support for our businesses to where they can get in the door, they can get their fit out done, they can get that initial support so that they can kind of get the ball rolling. So we've been looking at that, but we've also been looking at like changing our short-term improvement program so that they can include internal outfit as well, because that's you know, a huge expense not only for a landlord, but usually right on the tenant. Um, so we've been looking at a variety of those things, but again, something we obviously think about. Um, it's just the balancing act of when we cut the money off, <laughs> that type of thing. Um, and then our hope is that they stay, but is it worth the risk with, you know, spending tax dollars responsibly if somebody would, would you know, leave after a certain amount of time. Yeah, it's just about bringing foot traffic down. To oh, for sure. And I think the event piece of it is also going to help a ton more regularly program events that we can, you know, bring people down there more often and all the time. I think specifically, too, what she's talking about is daytime traffic. You know, so for yeah. doing events, you know. Yeah, so I think that's the impetus of this too. It's not just like nighttime stuff. Uh, every time, I mean, the restaurants bring the traffic. Up. Oh, for sure. But also, when when I talk to the sophomore business owners, what's their best day of business? The Sun Arts Festival. Yeah. <laughs> it's closed streets. It's daytime and nighttime activity. It's programmed events where you're bringing tons of people down. So that's I think what we're focusing on. Can artists set up in the street for free, like they do in New York? So there is a permitting process that's in place. It's very short, but it's the same similar process as outdoor dining is for pop-up retail. Um, and we have an online process for that as well. But yes, that is available. You just have to make sure you know, safety 
safety measures and, and having ADA access, all that fun stuff. So we do have to take a look at kind of what they wanted to do, um, but it is an opportunity. So the, I think we're, the subsidy for the rent, a lot of times people say there should be this, we need this, and uh, it takes an operator to can actually make a living and do with that thing that we all want, or the city wants. Uh, that's the one we should potentially think about subsidizing, like a movie theater, um, or an ice cream shop, or something, something that we think is lacking. I would suggest that that's the one that I think we can get behind, and, and it wouldn't. Um, justify a taxpayer expenditure if it helps all the other areas. So just just that thought. Yeah. That, uh, and I, I thought about as well having a lot of retail space in the Wall Street. There's certain things we didn't want. I, you know, I would need free rent for a long period of time for the right person that does deal with the foot traffic because uh, it helps the other business. I think that's a great point, and that's one thing that we do too from a programmatic aspect. We can say, okay, we're going to subsidize this industry this type of business specifically so i think it's definitely something we can consider and it makes a great point it works the same as kind of an anchor institution in a traditional retail mall people come for the nordstrom's and the bloomingdale's so what's going to bring people to downtown what business is that um, so a great point thanks jason anybody else is there a place to specifically see where the apartment funds are being for example, in my business, my restaurant business, I would think it would be beneficial for us to have those funds that are specifically supposed to go to helping in the recovery process. Mm -hmm. They can go to fire inspections, building inspections, things like that, so it doesn't take money out of the city, but that just gets reallocated back in. Mm -hmm. But it takes the onus off of the business owner to pay for those standard things that we have no choice but to do as a table. Great point. And I don't, do we have kind of a list of what all the ARPA funds are being spent on? I know we have, they're all approved by the Common Council, so you can see that there. But do we have a repository of where all that information is stored? Okay, so we have a PowerPoint that outlays all the ARPA funds and what those expenditures are going to be. So we can post it on our website so you can go take a look at that and we can shoot it out. We have all your information because you signed in, so we'll be able to share that. But good point and great idea to be able to pay for things that you have to pay for, essentially, and use those funds for that. Awesome. Anybody else? Yes. This is going so much better than I anticipated. <laughs> this one's not fitness related. Um, so I Uber part time too, so I do Ubering. This is more um, Washington Street related. It, in Ubering, you get to pick what you want to um, deliver or want to pick up. I rarely pick up Washington Street because parking. If there were like three or four parking to just pick up, I think more people will order in, order out, and just to deliver. I think people don't pick up Washington Street because you're not in and out. You got to go to the back, walk around, get the food thing go. If there were more four or five spots that were just five minutes to a minute parking spots. I think it may pick up a little bit of pickup traffic for the restaurants on Washington Street. Thanks. That totally makes sense. Jim, do you want to say anything about that? Or just note it? So, no, well, we, we can talk it and note it. So, mm -hmm. um, so I also oversee the parking authority. Uh, so we'll, 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 we're actually having a meeting this evening and we'll, we'll look to, to, to add this to, new, uh, to some new business. But we have been looking at, at managing the curve. Right, and you're not necessarily Washington, uh, but but also right now we have recently done a uh, new signage upgrade to uh, Wall Street. Some some time changes there. We're using that as a pilot. Uh, we're looking at how we introduce loading zones and how we could maybe manage the, you know that that Uber left uh, pickup drop off uh, kind of locations and uh, do, doing a little bit better job of it. So uh, we are currently uh, hiring uh, an assistant director of parking. If anyone's interested, it's a little. It on our website, uh, www.rct.org. Um, but you know, I'd love for you to interview. Um, but you're know, like, I think it's a really interesting time to, to, to get that. We really want to be, you know, super responsive to those things, and there's a lot of opportunity. So uh, it is noted, uh, but we are kind of looking at, at how we manage that in a global scale. Where are the 
signs, on the new signs. So there's a regulatory, so, so one, of, one of the things that we had was um, we had this two and, and three hour parking signs that everyone told us was really confusing because they were really confusing. Um, so, so we worked with the businesses to, to change the, the parking uh, restrictions there to, to a max three hours. Uh, so there's really not too much of a difference. We're measuring that with the, with the results. So all of those new regulatory signs that have, have occurred on Wall Street, uh, between Belden and Main and on Main Street, uh, down uh, to, to, um, to cross. Um, so okay. Yeah, we definitely need some signs down by Knight and High Street because there aren't any. There aren't any signs. The common sense says you have to park. I didn't want to get into the parking publicly here, but we just need some signs and preferably one code. So if you park, for my business, I have to ask them exactly where they park. And there's three different codes, depending on if you park in the high street. A zone, yeah. High street lot, on the street, up the hill, down the, you know, down towards the theater. It's, it's very, it's just a pain, you know, when we're trying to get on board and say, hey, it's, it's a buck, like, you know, I'll take it off your bill, then it's like, how do I get it? How do I do it? I can't even do it, you know, so. So no I sign. think, I didn't want to steal your meeting, I feel bad, but like, no. <laughs> um, so I think we can actually have a meeting all about parking. That's why I, I wasn't going to bring it up. No, 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 but like, why don't we touch base afterwards and we'll go, we'll, 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 we'll go through, through some of the things. Thank Sorry. You. Awesome. Thank you for bringing it up. Anybody else? There's a guy. Bring puppy for us today? I didn't bring enough. I didn't think this was going to be such a great turnout, but I'm happy to see everybody here this morning. I just wanted to compliment you and the city of Norwalk for the holiday uh, celebration that you all did. Can I say Christmas? Yeah. Christmas. It was great. I had family from out of town and they were very impressed by what uh, the activities were. I just want to know who was climbing down, who, who propelled down. It was Santa, wasn't it? Thank you. Thank you. Because it was great. I don't know. I'm sure all of you were there. I was there. I brought my family from Florida, and they, they loved it. But thank you very much for the activities during the holiday. Thank you. We're glad that you, you know, out of school. <laughs> We're able to do a lot more of that stuff, for sure. Anybody else? I'm coming. Hi all. So, um, are, are there any landscaping businesses here today, by any chance? Okay. Um, just flagging, we have some interesting things going on in the Ordinance Committee related to landscaping businesses, but I'll talk to a different crew about that. Um, but I did have a question for all of you. You know, one of the many things that we've been talking about a lot on the Common Council is our desire to support Norwalk as a city that is green and clean. We've been thinking hard about um, livability, sustainability, but also wanting to support our businesses that are working in the green energy space, that are working in the sustainability space. Are there things that we can do for all of you to help you operate your businesses more sustainably, sustainably to support you if you are um, in an industry or a business that's on the green side or the climate resilient side? We'd just love to hear thoughts if there's anyone in the room that wants to speak to that sort of particular goal of the cities. Anybody want to respond? If not, if you want to respond in an email, I can relay the information as well. Yeah, you, or you can find me afterwards. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Anybody else? I did receive some questions um, through my email from people who couldn't be here who wanted this recorded. Um, Steve, you are here. So I did receive a question about the new zoning code and how that affects a business that's in current operation, if it affects them. Uh, good morning. So this is kind of the standard zoning answer. If we change the regulations at any point in time, if your business or your property is operating legally, there's no impact on you. So that's kind of the, the short answer. Uh, there will be pretty significant changes coming through the new zoning regulations, which I hope will be out in public view hopefully next month. I'll try to find a better answer for that later today. But there will be longer term impact for the city, but if you have an existing business or property, Operating legally, you can continue to operate that no matter what we change on your property. So I think that answers the question. Awesome. Dominique, do you have any questions that you want to ask? <laughs> Here you go. 
Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to rush out the door like Senator Dunn for a committee meeting. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity. So one of the things I've been doing on one of my committees, which is generally the Workforce Committee for the state, is uh, trying to advocate, like Nora said, for building pipelines, better pipelines, because we know we're in a lot of workforce crises. I know I've heard from folks working in healthcare and education um, that we just need to, you, you need to retain your employees and you need assistance in that. So that's something we're really looking at. Um, whether that's tuition re uh, reimbursement or t free tuition on the front end, uh, those are some policy ideas. But then there's also just the need to be better connected with our for strategy. So I've been lucky to talk with uh, Chief Valerice about the work we're going to do at the Clean Economy Council. And one of the things I've proposed is to put it together a green jobs core, which fundamentally means that we can take our folks from vocational tech and other uh, programs, we have some here in Norwalk, and make sure that they have a pathway through. And what that could mean is an apprenticeship that they're, you know, the building trades are gonna help pay for, uh, and then placement in job. And so uh, if anybody here is interested in Mike is cutting in and out, sorry. If anybody is interested in, in kind of this workforce development piece, we're really active on this. I think we're gonna have a huge, I don't know if it's an omnibus, but we're gonna put a lot into this on that committee. So if you're working in sectors that are experiencing workforce crises, please reach out because we really wanna make sure we're building something that addresses your needs, not just what we think your needs are. And so um, the green sector is exciting because I think that the governor has made sure that this is going to happen. We're putting it into statute to make sure it does. And that's one of the ways we can help you is to kind of have a little bit of a mechanism to check in with OWS to make sure they're doing what they intended. Um, that wasn't really a great pitch for an exciting program <laughs> that I got into the weeds. But um, no, but we are aware of these looming workforce crises to build the green grid, to build your business, to make it sustainable. You need help and you need a workforce. And so that's what we're trying to do. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about that. Of course, of course, it's all exciting work, so we're really excited about that stuff. I see a lot of realtors in the room looking at you, Brian. Um, is there anything that, as a realtor, you guys are seeing that your potential tenants that you're taking around like need or specifically have issues with that we could potentially help with? I'm gonna put you on the spot because I know you like to talk. I know, but there's a lot of realtors in the room, so I'm, I'll pass the mic around to a lot of you. But that's something we want to get people in spaces, and I think you guys have the, the first-hand contact to be able to tell us kind of what their needs are. Yes, yeah, so more on the commercial aspect for me. Uh, I'm actually going out with a gentleman today. He's looking to open a high-end retail barbecue sauce uh, outfit. <laughs> Sounds weird, right? right. He actually means he's, he's, he's um, doing very well in craft shows and things like that. And now wants to get into the retail aspect of it. Uh, so that, that's one person. Um, the other, for me, again, is uh, actually just working with John, unfortunately, didn't come to fruition, but uh, have a woman looking to expand her daycare. Um, and uh, because her waiting list is so high, and some of us know daycare uh, costs are absorbent and insane, actually. But, um, that's, uh, that's my commercial aspect, but again, our residential, we were just at uh, a chamber event, and we had a couple of analysts talk about the a residential aspect that is declining, which I kind of kindly argued against, because uh, we're at like 1.5 months of inventory right now, which balance market is six months. Uh, so I'm also having problems with some of my residential clients. Uh, last week, $70,000 uh, offer over this price is still lost to house. So, you know, keep that in mind. So if it's not doing the loan, inventory is low. Yes, the interest rates are what they are, uh, but it's still historically low. Let's think about it. My parents bought it at 18%, right? So yes, the prices are different, but <laughs> here we are. Uh, also, my appraisals on residential are still coming in over what we're paying. And this is not even enough, but still coming in over what we're paying. So that's my thought process, and thank you for putting me on the spot. You're welcome. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys. And, uh, I'll bring him over to Jason for you. Oh, thanks. I just know when you use the mic. I just had a quick question. You glossed over or brushed on the events. I know of at least two people that want to do events. We tried to do one at the neighbor association. We didn't know how to predict how many people would come. And uh, one of the things that made it not happen was the cost of the police. Because we didn't know how many people, it was it was like $2,100 just for the police. And it might have been like 10 people. So I'm wondering, 
are people, if they want to run an event, should they come to you and you would work together with them to run the event and help fund the police and stuff like that? Uh, or are you going to put on the events? And are you looking for ideas for events? Correct. <laughs> yes to everything. Um, so it's a little bit of a mix of all of those things. So through the Development and Tourism Office, we'll have a special events coordinator. That special events coordinator will not only be responsible for putting on city events and using city funding for different types of events, that they have the opportunity to kind of create new and fun, exciting things, um, but also assist others in throwing events in the city. Um, there is a formula for a lot of that stuff. Um, PD uses previous events that may be similar to what you have done to kind of guesstimate what they will provide for service. Um, so on the back end, we're not so sure about the funding aspect yet because we have obligations for certain events that we already have planned. Um, but we will have staff resources to walk through the process as well. So a little bit of all that stuff. Yep. And if anybody has anybody that will be a really great special events coordinator, you can find that job posting on the website. <laughs> um, so we're, we're looking for somebody for that position as well. Um, we've gotten a lot of interest, but if you know anybody who'd be a great fit, or if you would be a great fit, feel free to apply to that as well. So we're hoping to get them on board before the spring starts so that we can start planning some seasonal events that would be really great. I, that just popped into my head. Um, might be a little bit of a taboo subject for some, but it's coming. Uh, cannabis. Uh, cannabis is uh, now it's legal in uh, in the state of Connecticut. Um, I know that Steve has put some presentations out there talking about the that those types of businesses coming into our city. Have has your office discussed anything about it? So my office has been interacting with cannabis businesses probably for two years at this point. Okay. Um, so we've seen a ton of interest. So what we're really looking at right now is who's gotten licenses from the state level that could potentially come to Norwalk. That kind of cross-reference with the list of the folks that we've talked to and shown interest at this point. Um, so Steve's team has done a really great job at kind of looking through our zoning code and making sure that we're kind of implementing these businesses in a smart way, you know, not near schools, those types of things. And then the Common Council members have literally worked months and months and months on cannabis regulations for use in the city of Norwalk as well. So we've been obviously talking about this for years. <laughs> if the state had just caught up to us at this point in time, um, with the licensing coming out, we only have about six companies that would even qualify in our ordinance. We're looking probably about three that would actually open as dispensaries in Norwalk. Um, but we've had a breadth of companies that aren't just dispensaries. So we've had micro cultivators, we've had delivery service, we've had um, manufacturing of, of edibles and lotions, creams, those types of stuff. Um, so it's interesting to see kind of this new market open up for us. Um, and we've seen tremendous outreach to my office as well as Steve directly as well. So we're looking at it. We, we've already put the regulations in place, so we're kind of at a point to kind of start accepting applications. Thanks, Brandon. I just wanted to add briefly, I'm a member of the Ordinance Committee, um, and we did quite a lot of time on the initial ordinance to permit the um, sale within the city. It is currently limited to three businesses, um, retail businesses. The ordinance did not necessarily address some of these other potential businesses that Sabrina discussed. I think it's a question that may get revisited um, by the council. Once the state licensing process moves farther along, we have a more realistic sense of kind of what we're looking at, what the limitations are, et cetera. Um, but this is a really open issue. The council, I think, has been very explicit about the fact that we intend to have conversations about this. We intend to be responsive to what the community is seeing, how the businesses are operating, what the opportunities are. I want to highlight, from the council's perspective, a really key part of this, which is that we get 3% of the sales tax on retail sales of cannabis. As many of you know, it is extremely rare for the state to allow us to get anything other than property tax revenue. And so for us, it was um, a really explicit decision that this revenue is important for the city, and we're very excited about that opportunity. Um, but we really welcome feedback, and we are looking forward to working with the business community and the residents to find a way to sort of manage this industry in the city as effectively as possible. Awesome, thank you for that. It's great to have council members here that work on <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead. We'll take one more question, and if anybody wants to raise their hands now, we'll kind of tally them off. But then we're gonna close. Sure. Is there a limit amount of businesses, and how long will permit? 
Yes, so for cannabis retail establishments, so dispensaries, we're limiting it to three. The other businesses are not limited at this current rate in time. So we're going to have a lot going next coming in to become issues. Okay, so yeah, a smoke shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of thing, like, we're trying to make Wall Street to have a look, and then it kind of like the police there and always the underage and all that kind of bring another negative aspect that I think that's what we look at. Okay, thank you. Thanks for flagging that. So we'll take a look at that. Sure. Um, so I think it's really important to make a distinction between smoke shops, which should not be selling cannabis, period, full stop. They are not licensed to do so. It is not legal. That is certainly something you can and should report to our police department. We are not permitting that. We are not encouraging that. No current business in the city of Norwalk can legally sell cannabis, full stop. So I want to be very clear on that. We will be permitting three licensed retail establishments. They will be opened in coordination with planning and zoning. So anyone selling cannabis in the city of Norwalk right now is not allowed to do so. Please report that. Please seek enforcement of that. Do not think that that is the thing that we are allowed or tolerating. I and mean, I really want to make that very clear. When the three licensed businesses open, you will know who they are. And you should be directing people to seek legal cannabis at a licensed business. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So just like you had to fill out kind of your permit process, they have to do so as well. And we have not opened up that process to the public yet. Um, so anybody who is doing that is doing so legally at this moment. All right, so I'm going to wrap up. I will be here after. If anybody wants to talk to me directly, some of our staff will be here as well if you want to have a short conversation with them. If not, your folders have free pens and notepads and also my business card in there. So. Feel free to email us at any time, give us a call. Like I said, the Business Development Center, we are open, we are there to, to receive you, to have a chat. If you wanna work there, by all means do so, but thank you again, everybody, for coming. And thank you again to our council members and our my friends, my staff that's here as well. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of